Hi, good morning again, everybody. Um, so I wanted to come to you today and share with you a testimony, my very own personal testimony of just a small uh, part of my life, okay? And in that, uh, I'm going to share with you uh, when I was saved, and I'm going to also share with you my going to hell, my own personal going to hell testimony. Uh, hell is a real place. It does exist. When you pass away, you're going to go to one of two places. You're either going to go to heaven or you are going to go to hell. There's no in between. And um, I'll just read you one little, you know, a lot of people say, oh, hell doesn't exist. And God, uh, Jesus spoke about hell uh, in different ways and in different passages of the Bible. So I'm just going to read you just one little Bible verse. If you want to do more, do your own research. I have many Bible verses, but I'm only going to read one. If you want to find more, you'll have to dig in the Bible, find them yourself. Uh, do your own due diligence, do your own research. Put the Bible in your hand and look for it. Uh, it's uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 46, and it says, This is Jesus, words in red, what he spoke. He said, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Okay? All right. So, I'm going to first start off when I was a teenager. Uh, now, I'm not exactly sure on the age. I think I was about 14 years old. I'm, I'm thinking I was 14. Um, yeah, 14 years old. I already almost want to cry. So listen, I'm not going to, um, I'm going to not have the comments on. My going to hell, I'm, before I tell you about that, I'm going to tell you, um, in my videos, I, I may already made my video, uh, testimony of me going to hell. And that video has been seen by over 30,000 people. Um, and then I had deleted all my videos off my channel, um, and, um, and then I replay, I put most of them back up again. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't have as many views now, but that's, that's not the point. It's just that I know that over 30,000 people have heard the truth. They have heard the truth of my testimony. And I know that some people have been saved by it. And that is why I'm going to, uh, make reference to it again. I had to uh, turn off the comments because can you imagine over 30,000 people picking me apart, condemning me and picking me apart, telling me I was never saved ever and calling me horrible names. And so it's not something I want to talk about, but I'm going to tell you guys about it because I love all of you, but more importantly, Jesus loves you. He wishes that none should perish. Okay. And all of us, you know, we, everybody likes to talk about God's love, which he does. He loves even the ones that has to go to hell. He loves them. And he's sad that they had to go. But it was their own choice. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about... Anyway, so I, I, that's why I'm deleting. I'm, I'm not having the comments on because I'm not trying to talk about this. And for every time somebody came and made a comment on that video when I went to hell, I had to relive it over and over and over again. I had to relive going back into hell every time. It's too much for me. I would sob and cry. Okay. And I, I can't go through that. So... <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I'm emotional about this, but it's, it was a very intense thing. Okay, so when I was about 14 years old, I got saved. I was going to this private school, and um, it was ran by this guy who used to be a teacher at a Christian school. And then a lot of, his, the, a lot of the kids that went to his Christian school came over to this other private school, which was not a Christian school, but... A lot of the kids transferred from there over to this school. So I'm saying that to say this. There were a couple of girls there who, you know, love God, especially this girl named Sue, Sue Miller. I'll never forget her. She uh, totally lived a life of Christ. Even though she was in high school, she lived a life of Christ. And I don't know how we got on the subject. I, I, I already had my Bible. I loved 
reading my Bible. I wouldn't, I won't, I won't lie. I, I didn't have a love of God. I had a love of the word. Okay. So, okay. So one day I had my Bible at school and she was asking me, she goes, have you ever accepted Jesus Christ as your savior? I'd never been asked that before. Now, mind you, I went to, I was in a, I, I was adopted when I was 16 days old. And, the, and my parents, they took me to church every single Sunday. Every single Sunday. Went to Sunday school and church. Every single Sunday. We didn't miss nothing. Okay? But my pastor had never, ever, ever talked about salvation. Never. He read stories out of the Bible. He came up with his own sermon. You know what I'm saying? He spent all week long uh, coming up with his own sermon in his head to talk about. But he didn't really read the gospel of Jesus Christ. Never heard the word salvation before. Never heard the word of accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Never. And I was 14 by that time. So, mind you, going it's every single Sunday in church and never hearing that. Not once. I always heard about how God loved me. But it never once ever crossed my mind to love him back. Okay? And mind you, I was a 14-year-old child. So, this girl named Sue said, well, open your Bible. She asked me, have you ever asked Jesus in your life? And I'm like, no. I looked at her like, what? You know? She said, open your Bible. So she opened the Bible up to a certain page and stuff. And she started reading to me all this stuff. And so, <laughs> forgive me if I cry. Ooh. So, she led me to Jesus Christ on that day. And I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. When I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, I was sitting, we were sitting on little, uh, we were sitting like at a, um, like this big table. And as, as soon as I asked Jesus Christ into my life, I felt a physical weight come off of my back. It was like when, when I asked Jesus Christ to come into my life and I felt the physical weight come off my back, I turned around like this because I thought one of my friends had been laying on my back like this. You know, I thought they'd been just leaning on my back and I w wasn't aware of it. A literal physical weight was literally lifted off of me when I got saved on that day. Um, I don't, I think it was probably a combination of many things. It was probably all my sin that was taken away from me and the demons that were surrounding me and in my life at that time, which I didn't even know they were there. I didn't even know that this weight was on my back. Okay. That's why I turned around and looked because I, what? I didn't know somebody was leaning on my back, but nobody was. Okay. It was all my sin and the devil. Okay. So. Like I said, I had never, I went to a church. It was a Methodist church. We never got taught loving God. We always got taught that he loved us. We never got taught about, oh, come on down to the front of the, the altar and get saved. None of that. Never, never. So it was, uh, you know, still after I got saved, I kept reading my Bible. But nothing in my life changed, okay? Because I was still going to the same church. And, um... Sue, it was right at the end of the school year, and then Sue was gone. She was out of my life. I didn't have her anymore. And um, so nothing in my life really changed. I kept reading my Bible because I just, I, I was a reader. I loved to read, loved to read, loved to read. And I, I, would, I would literally stay up in my room for a couple of hours every day reading my Bible. And um, it was totally amazing what happened in my life. So here I am. This shows God's love. Now, I'm going to talk about God's love for a moment. So, I'm sitting there and I'm going through my life and nothing really changed in my life. I mean, I didn't just uh, get this deep uh, love for God. Uh, I didn't know I was supposed to have that. Um, I still, at that time, did not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay? I asked for forgiveness and I asked Jesus to come to my life. And that's what he did. Okay? He forgave me of my sins and... Um, I, at that moment, had I died, I would have went to heaven. But this, this now I'm going to show you. This is how God works. Now, Jesus Christ is a respecter of our free will. He will not interfere with our free will. He will not force anyone to do anything. Okay? So, here I am. I'm living my life and I'm doing my own thing. 
and I end up getting this boyfriend, and I end up having premarital premarital sex. Uh, sorry if some of this is TMI. If it's TMI for you, then just bye. You know, I don't know what to tell you. I'm giving you a testimony of my life. So um, I started having premarital sex. So there we go. I just fell into fornication, and then uh, I wasn't with him anymore. I uh, when I was 16 years old, I fell in love with someone who at that time was married. And, um, you know, he told, I didn't know at first, I had no idea he was married. Um, and then one day he admitted to me that he was married and I was crushed, but he says, oh, but I'm getting a divorce from her. We're getting a divorce right now and all this, which he truly was, but it's, but you know, I, I, I was crushed inside because you know, this guy cheated on me. That's why I felt. But who was truly really the wrong one? So I went from fornicating to becoming an adulteress. Okay? But my mind didn't think about it in those terms. I was worried about my own feelings. Okay? So, had I died like that, I would have went to hell. Now, you can believe me or not, I I'm not here to convince anybody. I'm here to give my testimony. It's up to you to believe it or not. All right. So then it turns out I ended up marrying that guy. Uh, we were together for a total of 20 years. And uh, we ended up getting a divorce. Okay. So I'm sitting here leave it, living my life and doing my thing. And mind you, all this time I thought I was saved. All this time I thought, you know, I'm still reading my Bible. Not as much as I was. Without a doubt, sometimes I go months without reading my Bible. And I had no prayer life at all. No prayer life. I mean, you can't say you have a prayer life if you if you pray to God and say, talk to him for one minute out of once every six months. That's not a prayer life. Okay? It's just not. So, all right. So, whew, I'm living my life and I'm doing, I'm getting older and I'm getting older and I'm getting older. And some things have happened in my life. I almost died a few times and... Uh, I didn't die. But the, the ironic thing was, the last time I almost died, I had a pulmonary embolism in my lung. It's a PE. I had a pulmonary embolism in my lung and almost died. But do you know, and I knew, I knew that I could die at any moment. I knew this. But I wasn't, I had no fear. I didn't, my mind didn't go down that road of, okay, Andrew, when you die, where are you going? You know, all this kind of stuff, right? So, uh, I, I didn't give it a thought. I really didn't give it a thought. All I could think about was, oh, okay, when I get better, I'm just, I got to go do this. I got to go that, you know, resume my life, my normal life. So, I'm still getting older. I'm getting older, blah, blah, blah. So, here comes a time in my life where I guess my chances were running out because this is what happened to me um, is that I went to, I went to sleep one night. Like I always did. And I had a dream where I went to hell. So I'm going to put a link to that in the description box. I can't, I cannot retell it again. I'll, I will put the, if you want to watch it, I'm going to put the link to that video in the description box below. You can go watch it because, <coughs> excuse me, I can't go through that again. It's too traumatic. It's very traumatic. So uh, it was such a scary thing. So I don't want to go there. But anyway, so the reason why I'm telling you and bringing it up again is because I want to explain this to you. Yes, God loves us dearly. And he gives us chance after chance after chance after chance after chance to get it right. He will never force us. He will never force us. And it's his love for us that he gives us all these chances. Okay? So I'm very thankful now... <laughs> Now, a lot of people say, oh, you were never saved. That's one of the comments they used to give me on that, that going to hell video. Oh, you were never saved to begin with. Yes, I was. When I was 14, I was saved. I literally felt the sin and the devil get off my back. I was relieved of all of that, okay? And had I died at that moment, I would have went to heaven. But there's such a thing as called backsliding. And I don't even know if I could even consider myself as backsliding because I ever, never even had a relationship with, with Jesus. I mean, my relationship with him was just a salvation. That was it. I was saved. But there was no deep, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. There was none. 
And today, out of the grace and mercy of God, he gave me that dream. And that dream turned my life around in a split second. It didn't take me weeks or months. It was immediate change, immediate change in my life. And it's been a walk. And I say now, hallelujah, I have the deepest intimate relationship with him. I, I've, I can't even barely talk about Jesus without tears pouring out of my eyes because I love him so much. You know what I mean? I just I have I just love him. He is the very first thing I think about when I wake up in the morning. He's the very thing for last thing I think about at night when I go to sleep. I pray to him all the time. I mean, it's nothing for me to stay in prayer for several, you know, a couple hours at a time. I talk to him. Sometimes I wonder he's like, "Would you just shut up a little bit?" You know, I know he doesn't really think that way, but I'm just trying to explain to you the the deepness and the and the and the depth of my love for Jesus Christ. Okay, and obeying him and just wanting to please him. Oh, I just want to please him so much. I want him to be proud of me. Okay, so I want you all to please go to the uh, link in the description box and watch my going to hell testimony. Um, because that will prove to you there is no once saved, always saved. Like I said, on the day I got saved when I was about 14, I was saved. If I had died that moment, I would have went to heaven. But Huh. Jesus told me if I kept living the life I was living, we're talking about 14, I'm 52 years old now, so this happened some years back, but I would have went to hell because I was doing, you know, I was living my life and, you know, I was doing things that a lot of people think are normal and that they're okay and that they're innocent, and but they're not. If, if you don't have a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, if you if you're not walking in obedience behind him, um, but you are like living in intentional sin, intentional sin. Like the things I did, was doing, I knew it was wrong. I knew it was wrong, but I continued to do it anyway because I thought oh, it doesn't matter because I'm saved. No, oh, Jesus showed me. Otherwise, we cannot live in intentional sin. And I'm going to tell you another TMI, too much information, okay? I have to, I have to admit this to you, something, of course, I no longer do. And I'm embarrassed to say it, you know, it, it's not easy telling truths. It's not easy at giving, uh, admitting things to people, you know, and, and you got to, uh, you know, like be on this camera like this. But I, I have to admit to you, one of the things I was doing was masturbation. And people think that that's innocent. And it's not. It is not. Uh, when you do that, you're literally uh, doing sexual relationships with demons and stuff. I'm just telling you now, Okay. And I want to talk about it any more than that. I just have to admit it to you. So if that's what you're doing, you better stop. I was doing other things as well. But that's one thing that a lot of people think that's no big deal. You're not hurting yourself. You're not hurting anybody. But yes, you are. Okay, so I want to talk about that anymore. It's very embarrassing. Oh, God. Anyway, but God is good. And um, if I don't tell you the truth, your blood will be on my hand. And I can have that. Okay, so... I wanted to also bring up something to you real quick, and then I'll stop the video. I don't want to make it too long. Is you know, God gave a very severe warning to Hulk Hogan through me on his Facebook page. Uh, well, he has "I am that I am" on his arm. He has other photos of I, where he's praying to "I am that I am," and he's got his name Hulk Hogan. And on his Facebook page, uh, his profile picture um, on the picture itself, it's got written "I am that I am." So he's claiming to be "I am that I am." So, um, I didn't know these things. God, God gave me this dream about him. And then I did research to find out, you know, what's going on with this guy. And I saw all that. And then my spirit was like, wow, it was really strong in my spirit. That's it. You know, there could be other things, but that's it. Do you know now he only lives like an hour and 10 minutes away from me where I live. I could have went to his, he's got a beat shop. I could have went there and found him. I, I could sent him a letter to his house, but God has my ministry on this YouTube channel. And he, and he, and he gave me this dream to share to him as a warning. And I'm telling you, I'm almost 100%, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that he saw the warning. And that's how much God loves him. Do you know that he removed the I am that I am off of his Facebook picture? Mm -hmm. Because when the Bible says when his, word goes out it shall not return to him 
void without it accomplishing that in which he sent out for it to do. So God knew. And then in, in, in that video, I was like, it came across as I was really judgmental and angry. No, no, huh. that was the Holy Spirit came over me. And that was the anger of God. That was a righteous indignation from God that uh, through the Holy Spirit came out in that message, warning him because God was serious. He's not playing. But he loves him so much to give him that stern warning, right? That strong rebuke. And he, literally, he took it off. He, it, it does not say, I am that I am anymore in there. So I'm so happy for that, you know? And I, I'm not saying that I'm the only one. He, maybe he gave other people messages to give to him as well. You know what I'm saying? Maybe other other people to witness to him about that. I don't know. All I know is it's removed and hallelujah, all glory to God. And he does that because he loves us, Okay. So it's on my spirit very strongly today to share with you what I've shared with you. And please go into the description box and watch my uh, own personal testimony of me going to hell. And uh, But now you can see me today and see the grace and mercy that God extended to me in, in my walk with him now. <laughs> I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. All glory to God. So... Um, God bless you all, and I hope you enjoy your day. Goodbye.